go to the bathroom and if they pick up the eggs from their own bottom, uh, not from the pig, from their own bottom, they pick up the eggs, they eat the eggs, and then the same thing happens, what you saw with the pork, that it, it develops cysts in the brain, in the eye, in the muscles, in the skin. That is what happens when you pick up the eggs and you swallow the eggs, but not when you swallow uh, the, the lavender. Yeah? So let me repeat it again because I think it's important. And I've talked even to um, people that are in public health and they didn't um, put it right. So when you eat cystic meat like that, the larvae develops into an adult worm in your intestines. This adult worm produces eggs. And if you pick up the eggs because you're not washing your hands, and because you don't use toilet, I mean, I'm not, by saying you, I don't mean you, I mean people, yeah? If you pick up the eggs, then you develop cysts in your muscles, in your brains, in your eyes, and if you have cysts in your brains, of course it depends on how many eggs you swallowed, then you can develop epilepsy, yeah? But also, not every epilepsy is caused by the pig tip one. There are so many reasons for epilepsy. Huh? Some are metabolic, genetics, all kinds of uh, issues. So not every epileptic uh, has eaten bad pork. So and this, I'm just highlighting this because there's so many misunderstandings and there's uh, so many stigmas also around the pork. And um, so of course you cannot just blame the pig huh, for, for this kind of disease. Actually, the people are to blame because they're not washing their hands, they're not using toilets. And then they give the disease to their pigs. But by giving it to the pigs, they maintain the life cycle of that parasite. Yeah? So you have to manage it in the pigs, you have to manage it in the people. So some very basic advices are wash your hands after the toilet, before eating, anytime you pick up dirt. Um, keep your pigs clean, keep them away from human latrines, yeah, from human feces. People should use toilets and latrines, they should never go in the bush. Uh, I mean, urinating uh, does not transmit the disease, it's really um, going for a long haul. But it's not a nice answer. So, these are just very basic um, good management practices. Because the thing is, it's in theory possible to treat these animals with oxpendazole, it's a dewormer. But you would have to do it over weeks, so it's not really feasible. And the problem is also, it's, uh, we don't have any tests here in Uganda, so you can detect it on farm. In the live pigs, you sometimes don't see the same. So if you cannot detect that this pig is carrying cysts, how are you going to know it needs dewormers for that particular worm? You cannot. So that is why it's best to observe these practices. Also, if your children seem to have a tapeworm, take them to the doctor. Because it's very easy to treat in humans. The adult worm can be treated with praziquantel. That is the same medication you use um, for treating uh, bilirubinosis, for example. So it is a dewormer that is here in the pharmacies. It's available, it's not very expensive. So this problem is manageable. But it's very important that you understand the life cycle of this parasite, yeah? So, keep eating pork. So now, how do I show you that picture of that brain? Come back to that. Is it a human brain or a pig brain? This one I don't have. As a hard copy. I'm going to show you later. No, no, but it's always good to have some ugly pictures because it's better to remember. No, no, but zoonoses are not nice, eh? it's not eating ice cream. It is really serious. So it is always good to have some pictures in the back of your head that you can refer to and remember. It's a, it's a human brain. Mm -hmm. Because we just learned, uh, yeah, the pigs, they don't show the signs. So, please. Someone has 
than do to kill it. Yes, that is. But it's a very long procedure. So in people, they would actually go and have a CT scan. A CT scan is a very fancy apparatus in the hospital, and they scan your brain. Yeah? They make pictures of your brain, like an x-ray sort of thing. And then they see actually uh, the holes. They see the cysts. Because they're filled with some liquid, so it looks like holes on the picture. So there is medication, but it takes a very long time. And you can never be sure with that all the cysts are eliminated. So it's better to prevent it from the start. Huh? And also, it depends on when you actually diagnosed with those cysts. The earlier, the better, of course. But if you go uh, when you're already very, when you have big problems with epilepsy, a lot of convulsions, and you probably have a lot of cysts in the brain or in a special location of your brain, it becomes more complicated, of course. So, the best thing is to avoid it right from the beginning. Yes. Oh, yes. This would be very interesting. Yes, this is actually a free publication. Huh? It can be circulated. It was also it was a, a joint project by you as AID. Ilomi was also part of it. My professor at the university he gave it to me, and it's free for publication. So I can also send it to you in an email if you want. Yes. Then you okay, okay. I don't know if we have a photocopy machine here. Otherwise, I can email it to you. It's no problem. Yes. Then, then you, I will just pass around this one, the paper, you write your email addresses here and your name if you want and then I can send you all the material. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because uh, otherwise I get confused. If this one wants this paper, the other one wants that one, I send you the, the whole, the, also the presentation. Yes, well, the scientific name of this worm is called Tinea solium. There is also a beef tapeworm, it's a similar life cycle, uh, but um, the pork tapeworm is more dangerous huh, for people. Can you speak up, please? How are the uh, statistics as far as infection rates in, say, Uganda, because you've done some work in some areas? Uh -huh. How frequently have you seen this uh -huh. as far as transmission to humans? So. so I tell you what we did. We collected blood samples from pigs, uh, from 1,200 pigs about in the three districts. And we found antibodies to that parasite. Uh, no, no, not antibodies. We found a tapeworm in about 40%, 40 to 45. So it's really, a, it's not a minor thing, eh? it's a lot, it's almost half. So, but the thing is pigs can also carry the beef tape one, but it's, it doesn't develop into all these uh, symptoms in the pigs. So now we are finding out whether this is just the pork tape one or also the beef tape one eh, in those pigs. But the fact is that pigs in Uganda, they seem to be very highly infected with tapeworms. And is this in the, shall I say, the backyard farm? Or is this like the yeah. Okay, well, as I said earlier, we are focusing on smallholders. So we were, we were sampling pigs from smallholder farmers, those that had less than five animals. Yeah? So I would assume that if you are actually venturing in that business, you have, don't have free range pigs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have all, you can find them. Yeah. And then usually the risk goes down very quickly because they don't have access to any feces outside, right? And it's very unlikely that somebody does that call in the pig pen. So, <laughs> and, no, that, but that is how you break the cycle, yeah? Because it's the human feces where you find the eggs. And if they don't get access to the eggs, they cannot develop the cysts. It's as simple as that. So by confining the pigs, you're already doing the, uh, well, the best you can do to minimize the risk. Please. Um, since, since the pigs do not show any sign or symptoms, is there like a strong um, dewormer that takes care of most of the ones? So that you know every time you are in this farm, you are taking care of everything, just in case. Because the guys who look after the animals could move away from the farm, go to 
a neighbor's place, pick something, and then come back to the farm. And they can carry that. Yeah, but you, I think, let me give you two options. You decide where there's more people. So like these ones, for example, they're in the intestines of the pigs, huh? Yeah. So you can treat them with your wormers, like albendazole, ivermectin. So you have your deworming plan, huh? You do it regularly, you observe uh, the general hygiene. <coughs> but with this tapeworm, it's difficult because the tapeworm is in the meat. So it's different, it's a different drug, a different mechanism than giving the pig a medication that goes into the intestines. So, as I said earlier, you can treat the cysts with oxvendazole, but you have to give it to them over weeks. And still there is no way for you to monitor uh, that they are cyst-free. With these worms, for example, the vet, he can take the stool sample and it's very easy to uh, do a smear under the microscope and see whether the worms are still there or not. So, but for the cyst, there is no way of monitoring it. So, the risk that you're saying is very real, that you have staff, they go home, they pick up the eggs. So how you can prevent this is that they have their own boots at your farm. So, and they don't take the boots home. So whenever they come, they have to change, they put on the boots that you provide them at the farm. And whenever they go, they leave them at your farm. So, and this is a very general biosecurity measure that also helps you reducing the risk for swine fever, any other parasites, you know. Uh, getting any disease from outside from your farm. So giving your staff their own equipment. Yeah? And yeah, as I said, treating them with oxfendazole, it's possible in theory, but it's not really practical. So I give you that option, but I don't advise you to use it. It's better to observe these other biosecurity measures. So any other questions on the tape one? Please. In, in your personal opinion, mm. do you think that the roasting of this pork around most of us uh, cysts in around Kampala, at least when you saw it, but the, the roast pork in ordinary places, do you think uh, the, <coughs> in short, that meat is safe enough to eat? Um, I, think, I think, yes, it's, it's roasted long enough, also when it's cooked. Of course, it, there's a small risk that like one piece was not uh, at the bottom of the pan and was not cooked long enough, or it was not roasted long enough. But also what we have, what we know now, that the peaks in the central region, they are mostly cyst-free. The veterinarians, they say they don't see it often. So, and even though most of this pork at the, at the pork chines is probably uninspected, um, it seems that the prevalence of cystic meat is not very, or the, 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 the occurrence of cystic meat in the central region is not very high. So, when you go to the pork joint, just make sure they cook and roast it long enough. Yeah? So, you are there. So you should not push them. I've seen actually Mozungu people. They, I went to Ndera Center. I had some visitors. I went there and we were watching the show. And then in the break, we wanted to get some pork. So I saw Mozungu and he was pushing that poor guy there. Can you move faster? I want to eat now. And this guy said, no, no, no. I'm instructed to roast it for half an hour. Yeah? And yeah, so, but the Muslim, and then he decided to walk off, so he didn't buy the pork. And then I thought, how stupid is that? This man wants to do something good for your health, so you should help him and not punish him for that. So just make sure that they roast it long enough, that the fire is on, yeah? And uh, I mean, here actually also at the pork joints, they don't, they like the meat well done, also the butchers themselves, so why should they prepare it differently for you than for themselves? So, yeah. Any other questions? Please. These are best medication as it exists in humans. In humans? Well, I'm not a human doctor, so I am not advising on any medication because it's not my mandate. And uh, also, uh, even though well, these drugs have very long and complicated names, I tell you, but uh, even it's not good if I tell you the name because when you have epilepsy, you should always go and see a doctor. They have to really diagnose where is your epilepsy coming from, because then they can decide how they treat it. So there are different treatments for epilepsy. 
but there, there are drugs uh, with very, very long name. Uh, I think there are about three in Uganda also uh, that you use to treat the epilepsy coming from the pig tip one. Yeah. But we don't want to interfere with uh, the human medical doctors. It's their mandate, that's their work. We, we look at the animals, they look at the people. But we want to work together and know where there are options huh, for treatment in both. Yeah. Please. Uh, is any disinfectant available for the eggs of the uh, temple? Uh, can we get a vector? Disinfectant. Disinfectant. Oh, well, any disinfectant works. Mm. Actually, those, those eggs, they don't survive very long in the environment, but it, the problem is in a pile of gum, it's moist, there's shade here, yeah? so they can survive there. But if it's dry, for example, if it's they dry up very quickly. If you use uh, any kind of disinfectant um, for, your, for cleaning the pig pens, it works perfectly fine. It's much more complicated with those eggs. Eh? The eggs of this one, they can live up to five years. They're, they're very strong. So, but not so the, the, the pig tapeworm eggs. So if you keep your pens clean, if you observe these other biosecurity measures, you should be on the safe side. Yeah? Should we go on? Yes. Or there's one more question. Uh, I wanted to know how often should I warn the pigs uh, against those other one infections? Those other ones, I would recommend that you would be warned them every uh, three months, two to three months. Hmm. But as I said, even for, for the piglets, eh, it's, it's quite good if they are exposed somehow to the worms. Of course, you want to keep the, the worm burden very low because you want them to grow. But uh, the worms are there. They're just everywhere. It's, we have to face it. Huh? So you want them to develop some kind of an immunity. So they're strong enough to fight them, but you want to keep the burden low so they don't have those adults feeding on their energy, feeding on your feed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So, please, I was asking, uh, you told me that there's some uh, this precaution that we can use to uh, avoid that, is to keep the pen clean. And some of us are getting organic. We don't use a dry animal. Mm -hmm. We don't clean at all. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to with worms? But actually, with the IMO, there's also been some evidence that it actually uh, kills the worms because it kills bacteria. So you have salmonella and E. coli and some, some of these bacteria that affect the pigs and it uh, seems also to have a good uh, effect on the worm eggs. So, but there's not enough scientific evidence that it actually reduces the worms. So it's best if you still keep the worm down, huh? Yeah. And actually with, with these worms, huh, not, uh, most of the worm eggs, are, they're easy to, uh, to be eliminated. But these are very strong, as I said. So you make sure um, that the new pigs you get into your pen, they're actually free of this one. So as I said earlier, the vets, they know they can, they should be able to take a sample, a fecal sample from the pig. So there's not really, they don't have to take a needle or anything. They just take some pieces and they examine the stool. And then uh, they find out whether they have eggs or not. So and then they should be the one somewhere else in quarantine before you bring them to your farm. So they don't even start bringing the eggs. Huh? So when I say I don't clean, I mean even this is one thing. Yeah. Does this can remove spit or anything? This is really bring us food or maybe later on we can press it for. No, no, no. But that is, uh, I think, what the IMO is actually also good about. That that's what that was one of the motivations to keep the hygienic standards in the pens very high. Uh, that they walk on the natural soil, the pigs, but also that there, well, some pH, you know, it's a little bit acidic, for example, that it kills up certain, certain uh, bacteria and other pathogens. Yeah. So it, also, it should also kill the worm eggs. But I doubt it will kill those worm eggs. That's why I said uh, you, you do it. When you, uh, yeah, you do worm, but when you do worm, they shed the eggs, huh? Because, as I said, the, the, the worm kills the adult eggs. So the adult egg comes out, uh, the adult worm comes out and is dead. But in, inside, there were so many eggs. They can they can produce like two million eggs a day. Wow. 
one. You imagine, so many. So that's why I said you want to make sure the pigs that you bring into your farm, they're actually free of those. Yeah? So, and it's possible, they can be put in the quarantine, you give them uh, the warmer, avamectin, um, and then after two, uh, two weeks, they take them again, and then they should be free, and then you take them to your farm. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, sorry. I'm, I keep ignoring this table. It's not a question. There was that question about the treatment of uh, of uh, tech form in Uganda. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give some information on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. We usually treat it with prazipantia, uh, but really long term. But not to get scared, it's really, really rare that you see any cases of epilepsy and it's attributed to the pop tech form. In the event that somebody has epilepsy, they would also be given treatment to just manage to stop the episodes. And that's usually phenobarbital. And then you can also be given anti-inflammatory drugs. These are things to stop the swelling of the tissues around where the lava are. But it's presequential for a really, really long time. That's the common thing that they use here. But prasequantil is also the drug they use for the adult yes. type one in people's intestine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Does it answer your question? I'm happy we have a medical doctor here. <laughs> okay, so I will continue with another disease. It's still too bad because uh, I want to show you pictures, of course. But let's hope for the best that it comes back. Um, there is another disease, it's called trichinellosis. It's also a worm. And um, the trichinellosis, I don't know, has anyone ever heard of this one? Trichinellosis. I told you earlier I'm German, huh? We like to eat raw pork. So there, the government made a lot of effort to control this disease. Um, because you also have larvae in the muscle, but it's more challenging than the cysticercosis because you cannot see it with the bare eye. You can only see it under a microscope during meat inspection. So, and since the meat inspection is um, lacking in most of the places in Uganda, um, I wanted to tell you about this disease because we found it in all districts and mostly in Kamuli, in the very uh, rural areas. So, um, and trichinellosis is also a parasite, and um, in humans, it, some people they don't have any symptoms, and some have very severe symptoms, they can even die. And it starts with some little nausea, and a little stomach ache, and maybe some diarrhea. And then after a few weeks, it can develop into a swelling of the face and the eyes. And uh, you feel very weak, you feel pain in the joints and in the muscles, uh, which might remind you of some other diseases that you know. Uh, and um, yeah, constipation, after the diarrhea follows constipation. Yeah, this picture is a little bit ugly. Um, it shows the eyes are very red, they're swollen, they're tearing, and there's some like pus in the eyes because um, this larvae that was in the meat um, doesn't make the pigs sick, but it makes the people sick. It's it's a very similar life cycle to uh, to that uh, what we just discussed the pork tapeworm. You eat the larvae, it goes into your intestines, but then it starts moving from the intestines. It starts moving to your head, to some other organs, to your muscles. So it gives you pain because it's an inflammation. So, um, and they sometimes seem that it's a little bit like malaria or flu. So many doctors in Uganda, they might not even think of uh, trichinellosis. So, but the problem is if these larvae, they go into the heart muscle, muscle people may die. It is not really, uh, it is not common. Uh, most of the time people recover themselves, but it is possible. And actually, in, in Europe, we have a lot of problems now with uh, the EU. We have free trade, which is nice for uh, the businesses, but it also gives a lot of challenges. For example, we imported um, salami, some uh, raw meat sausages from areas uh, where they still have a lot of chichinellosis. 
and uh, people actually in Germany they also fell sick. Even though we have very strict um, regulations, it's still possible that uh, sausages, raw pork, uh, can enter the market this way. And raw pork is not only like minced meat; it's also um, bacon, ham, salami, these kind of products that are not cooked. And uh, the parasite lives in lizards, for example, in um, rodents in uh, birds, in any kind of little wildlife and that is why you should make sure that they don't enter your pig pens. You should keep it rodent free, you should make sure that there are no lizards and birds and uh, it is more challenging for those farmers that have their pigs free ranging. That's why we found it a lot in Kamui because the practice of free ranging pigs is very common. So, let me not talk too much about this, because these parasitic cycles, they're very similar. So, the problem with parasites is, it's not that it's transmitted from me to you. Most of the time, there's some other animal in between. Huh? Like uh, the, the pork tapeworm. It can be transmitted from people to people if they don't wash hands. They give some other people their hands by greeting them, and uh, they transmit the eggs. Yeah, but it's also transmitted through eating contaminated pork for a diversion. Same with Trichinella. It is transmitted to the pigs when they eat rodents and when they eat birds and lizards. And that is transmitted to us. Yeah? And then the cycle closes and it goes on and on and on. So we are trying to break the cycle by good farm management practice. Because again, there is not really a way of detecting the larvae in the, in the pigs and we can only detect it when they are slaughtered. Yeah? But since uh, there is not really a structured meat inspection yet in Uganda, um, that's why it's not detected. And then when you eat undercooked pork, you can also be affected. So, but I can also tell you we are trying to train more meat inspectors and, uh, in Italy at the training plant when we are training um, the DBOs and some of their staff uh, in how to conduct, um, how to follow a good meat inspection protocol and what they can do. Because microscopy is not even expensive. Uh, it just requires the knowledge. And some electricity is also good. Can I like microscopy? Please. Can I like microscopy? You, you like a I said, can I like microscopy? Uh, well, you, you can. Well, you have those that don't need power actually, yeah. but it's better to have a good stereo. Actually, you need a stereo microscope. Okay. But once you have it, um, uh, you don't have to uh, invest in a lot of big laboratory equipment. Mm -hmm. And that is actually the good thing, the good news. So now we know about some certain diseases. We can train people on how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, another parasite is toxoplasmosis. I don't know him here. Have you, as a medical doctor, heard about toxoplasmosis? So maybe you can describe what does it do to people? I've not seen any cases actually. Ah. It's supposed to be uh, like with, children, with pregnant women, they can have a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. mm. So, uh, in a toxoplasmosis, actually most of us, they're, they're positive, they carry toxoplasmosis in the whole world, not only in Africa, in the whole world. Huh? And this parasite is even said to make uh, men unpunctual and behave like machos and these kind of things. That's what they say, some scientists, huh? they say they, this parasite makes men come late. So, uh, I mean, you never know, and there are actually some parasites out there, they manipulate their, in their hosts. As I told you, huh? they're, they're, for a parasite, you often have um, a very complex life cycle. So, there are some parasites, they make ants walk up the grass, so they're eaten by birds. But normally, those ants, they would never walk up the grass. So it is possible that the toxoplasmosis also manipulates the men. But uh, yeah, so normally in healthy people, this parasite is not dangerous. Huh? Uh, and most of us are probably um, positive for this parasite. 
The only problem is for people that are immunocompromised, for example, they are HIV positive, and I mean, there's still a lot in Uganda. And the problem is also, you can be healthy and infected, but then maybe you get sick with a chronic disease, and the infection reactivates, it comes back. So then the signs could be um, brain infection, it could be, um, yeah, in, in pregnant women, for example, it can uh, result in miscarriage, in abortions. So, and even babies, they can come to the world um, and they, they still seem healthy, but after some time later in life, when they're under stress or they get exposed to another disease, they can then fall sick. They can problems, have problems with the eyes, the infection goes to the eyes, it can even lead to blindness. And it can uh, yeah, lead to very uh, long-term chronic disability. It's also treatable, but the problem is probably the detection. And I mean, we, we know from diarrhea. I mean, how many people come to your office with diarrhea and want to know what the cause of their diarrhea is? It's very rare. Exactly. So, but most of the time, we don't really know what was the reason huh, for this diarrhea. What was the reason for this fever? What was the reason for um, the joint pain? We just assume. We give some treatment, but maybe there was another reason for these symptoms. So, and maybe the pig was the reason. So, toxoplasmosis, we also found it in all districts. We found it especially in Mukono, which was interesting because in Mukono, uh, the, 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 the piggery is also a little bit more advanced already, as for example in Kabul, yeah? In Mukono, you have a lot of people, they keep their pigs confined uh, or tethered, for example. So, but still, they have toxoplasmosis. So, um, this is either a problem of also rodent control, and it's also a problem um, of having cats in the compounds because the cats, they are the culprits. They are the ones shedding the eggs of this parasite. And they sometimes, you put a cat in your feed storage because you want to control the mice. Huh? But then the cats, they eat their feces. Yeah? So, and they contaminate the feeds of the pigs. And then the pigs become these intermediate hosts again, and they maintain the cycle. And people, when they handle the pork, if they don't wash their hands, for example, they can pick up this parasite. You cannot see it with your bare eye. If you use the same knives for pork and for cutting your vegetables that you eat raw, for example, the cabbage eh, or tomatoes, you might contaminate.